Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Peripheral neuropathy. Now, if you don't have it, you're lucky and you probably aren't familiar with the term, but unfortunately, it's fairly common and worth knowing something about. Now, your nervous system is divided into two parts, the central nervous system that includes the brain and the spinal cord, okay, and the peripheral nerves, which come out from the brain and the spinal cord, and we'll be talking about the peripheral nerves. I've already learned something new today. Yes, you know, yeah. Now, if the peripheral nerves are damaged, and that can happen for a multiple, multiple, of re- multiple reasons, it can result in weakness, numbness, and pain, usually in your hands and feet. And here to tell us more, including the best options for treating peripheral neuropathy, is Mayo Clinic neurologist, Dr. Michelle Mauerman. Thank you for being here and welcome to the program. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Thanks, Dr. Mauerman. So tell us about the, the symptoms and does it depend on which type of nerve is involved? Yeah. So when I evaluate a peripheral neuropathy, one of the first things I talk about is what is involved. And so that is exactly what you're talking about is which nerves. And so there's different types. We talk about sensory nerves, motor nerves, and autonomic nerves. So for the sensory nerves, you can have either negative symptoms, so a lack of feeling, a dead type numbness, or you can have positive symptoms. So those that are prickling, tingling, sometimes burning, sometimes more painful, like electrical shocks or sharp type pain. So it's really helpful to kind of clarify both the negative and the positive. So there are three different kinds mm-hmm. of nerves. And yeah. Is it mostly the sensory nerves, the one that provides sensation uh, yeah. to your brain that are involved? Yeah, so the, usually the sensory nerves are often involved the most or the earliest in a peripheral neuropathy. So they're typically the first ones that patients will have. After that, or in some cases, predominantly, they can have motor involvement. And so motor involvement, typically patients will describe weakness. And so in the most common types of neuropathy, it affects the longest nerves the most severely. And so that would be the nerves to the feet. So people will describe that they're tripping or stumbling over their feet. And maybe it's severe enough that they actually get a foot drop where they can't lift the ankles at all. Other symptoms of weakness could be difficulty getting out of a low chair, going up and down stairs, or trouble opening a bottle, um, things that involve grip. The last um, type of fibers that can be involved are the autonomic fibers. And those are what I think of as the automatic functions of the body, so the things that happen that you don't think about. So um, some of the symptoms of those can be what we call postural lightheadedness, or feeling like you might faint when you stand up. Um, People can have dry eyes or dry mouth. Um, Some of the gastrointestinal symptoms, like early satiety, feeling full right after you eat, or if you eat a small amount, you feel bloated or you actually vomit. Um, Diarrhea, constipation. And then um, people can actually have change in their sweating, so they may notice they don't sweat anymore. Or they can have in men erectile dysfunction. So those are some of the common autonomic symptoms. Wow, a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of things <laughs> yeah. that go wrong. It'd be hard to pin it down. Is it mm-hmm. hard to identify this or to? I, yeah, the history is really key, and so I think the most common things people in the garden variety, most common types of neuropathy, describe sensory symptoms in the feet, imbalance because. When you have a lack of feeling, you also don't know where your feet are. And so it's particularly apparent when people close their eyes or they have to walk in a dim area because now you've taken away the visual cue. They have an abnormality in their sensation, so they don't have as much to rely upon. So some of those symptoms are some of the earliest things. So imbalance, loss of sensation, and it should affect often the feet more than other places. Why? What are the causes of this? Yeah. So there's many causes. I would say there's over 200 causes of neuropathy. So that's, you know, where it can be difficult. But certainly there are things that are more common. So the most common things in, you know, the United States particularly would be diabetes. You know, worldwide we think about things like leprosy. But um, do do we know why uh, or how diabetes affects the nerves? Yeah, we do. Um, So prolonged hyperglycemia, we know um, contributes. That's high blood sugar. Mm -hmm, Yep, high blood sugar, thanks. Um, Contributes to the damage. Um, It's also goes along with the other microvascular complications of diabetes. So things like the small blood vessels. The small blood vessels like the kidney um, and the eye. So those are often commonly affected together, especially in patient, patients who have type 1 diabetes, which is the kind that you ca- often think about as occurring in young childhood or adolescence. They have no adolescence. insulin, can't make right. any insulin. can't make any yeah. insulin. Um, so diabetes, the number one cause in, in yes. the United States? Mm-hmm. That's correct. And what else? Um, the other things we think about are some vitamin deficiencies, so like B12 deficiency. So that's more common um, if you're a vegetarian, 
or if you've had some kind of stomach surgery that maybe you don't absorb the vitamin well, and then some patients it's an autoimmune problem. Um, other thing that we commonly think about are monoclonal proteins. So those are abnormal proteins produced by your bone marrow. Everybody makes them, but you shouldn't make too much of one particular type. We call that a clone. And we know that uh, 10% of patients with neuropathy will be found to have one of these monoclonal gammopathies. And then the problem is then trying to figure out, are they related? But that's common and something we typically screen for. All right. With regard to diagnosis, you mentioned how important the history is. Mm -hmm. Physical exam, I assume, is also important. Yes. I think You've as neurologists, we love to do the physical the exam. And... Exactly. So when we're looking at a <laughs> peripheral neuropathy, you know, the three key parts of the exam really are the motor exam, looking at reflexes looking for weakness and sensation mm -hmm. looking at sensation so you know we're doing a manual exam checking people's strength um, and their arms and legs particularly we're tapping on the reflexes and the arms and legs and typically they're reduced especially you know the ones at the ankles and then sensation because there's different sensory modalities we're doing different things we're checking how well they feel just light touch with like a cotton swab we're testing how well they feel pin with like a sharp pin, so that's pain sensation. We're looking at temperature, so we use warm and cold. And then we test sometimes what we call vibration and where the joints are in space. So there's different sensory modalities. And then we look at how people walk and how they balance. So let's talk about the treatment options mm -hmm. because it's a fairly common problem, but particularly yeah. since there are so many people with diabetes in this country. Right. What can you do for them? So for the most common type of neuropathy, again, the symptoms are in the feet. So there's simple things you can do first. So if people are having a lot of painful symptoms or burning, tingling, you know, it's uncomfortable for their feet to be touched. Um, simple things like soaking the feet in a cool bath of water for 10 minutes can be helpful. Um, you know, simple analgesics like um, acetaminophen or ibuprofen. Um, if it's more severe than that, or you need to take it a step farther. There's topical agents. So those are things that we can actually mix into a cream or a gel. And they have anal anesthetics in them. Um, as well as um, medication that we can actually give orally as well, but it's just um, some of the anti-epileptic medications or the antidepressants that can be soaked up right into the nerve endings. And so you don't get other systemic side effects, which is nice. And then if people still need more than that or their symptoms are more widespread, then we may use some of the oral medications, things like tricyclic antidepressants, um, some of the anti-epileptic medications, um, some of the antidepressants that work on both what we call serotonin and norepinephrine pathways. What about any therapies or what about acupuncture? Yeah, so I think a lot of my patients who have pain, they um, want to try acupuncture. Some people have a good benefit with it. Um, and so I think it's something that's reasonable to try as an adjunct to their treatment. All right, peripheral neuropathy, it's a painful uh, condition of the nerves and most commonly affecting the feet, but also the hands. The most common cause in the United States, diabetes mm -hmm. mellitus, and unfortunately, there's an epidemic of that in this country. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, multiple treatments available. Dr. Michelle Mauerman, neurologist at the Mayo Clinic, thanks so much for being with us. Yeah, thank you for having me.